Hi everyone, I am here with another true story for you from the Miracles Do Happen book. Guidepost people sent in. And this one is called While My Parents Slept. And it's by Emma Wilford. Religious faith may seem exclusive to some people. But for me, it's never been a problem because of something I witnessed as a seven-year-old girl living in Cleveland. I was the fifth of six children born to Polio Florio as Asanta Cesarelli, who lived in a wooden frame house on West 16th Street in a sprawling, ethnically mixed neighborhood. Their first child, Dominic, was soon followed by Mary, Rose, Teresa, me, and little Anthony. Papa worked long hours with the Cleveland Railway Company to support us and wasn't home much. Mama was busy doing laundry, mending clothes, shopping, and cooking, yet I never heard her complain. She had strong religious faith and took us all to church every Sunday. My brothers, sisters, and I all looked up to Dom, our big brother. Tall and handsome, Dom had straight black hair parted stylishly down the middle with large expressive brown eyes and a beautiful smile. He charmed everyone. Dom quit school after the 8th grade to make money for our family. He worked as a shoe salesman and bought us treats with his weekly salary. Robust and confident, he had never been sick a day in his life. Mama and Papa doted on him, as we all did. Then one morning, when Dom was 17, he didn't appear for breakfast. Where's Dominic? Mom asked, dishing out our oatmeal. I put down my spoon and dashed upstairs, peeking around his door. He lay in bed. Dom, I said. He waved at me. I'm too tired to get up, he said. Mama appeared and put her hand on his forehead. He has a fever, she said. She brought cold cloths for his head. But hour by hour, the fever climbed. After two days, he became delirious. Thank goodness Papa was home, and he and Mama got Dom to St. John's Hospital. The diagnosis was grim brain fever, spinal meningitis. Even nowadays, this dreaded disease can be fatal or cause permanent brain damage. But Dom got it before antibiotics and other wonderful drugs. He slipped into a coma, and his doctors could only advise my parents to pray. Mama and Papa certainly didn't need any encouragement to do that. Every morning they left for the hospital in anticipation, but their faces were always strained when they returned home in the late afternoon. I was only seven, but I knew Dom was very sick. We sat beside him talking. I heard Mama telling one of my sisters for hours, but he can't open his eyes or make a sound or even move a finger. Papa put his arms around her, and she leaned against his chest, weeping softly. Like our parents, we children prayed hard for Dom to recover. My prayers were sincere, but I have to admit that with each passing day, my faith weakened. God, why aren't you making Dom well? This has been going on for so long. Then on the 17th day of his coma, Dom's face began to turn blue. His lungs were felling. His heartbeat was weaker. Dom was dying. Mama and Papa sat with him for hours, holding his hands and praying. Then they returned home exhausted. I had just gotten back from school when I saw Mama and Papa come in. They were so sad and tired, they barely spoke. Mama went right to the bedroom and to lay down. When I looked in a minute later, she was fast asleep. While resting on the couch in the living room, Papa had fallen asleep too. As I played with a doll on the kitchen floor, I looked at the dust motes drifting in after the late afternoon sun. Why wasn't God making Dom better? Weren't all those prayers from all those people helping? I uttered another one of my own from deep within my being. God, please make my brother well. I sat in silence for a few minutes, a shiver building along the back of my neck. From far away, I heard a dog bark, a window open, a neighbor call out. Then suddenly the stillness was broken. Papa woke with a start. He gave a cry like I had never heard before. A Santa, a Santa, and leaped to his feet. 
He raced toward the bedroom. At the same time, Mama had woken. As I sat on the floor, in wonderment, my parents rushed to each other from opposite ends of the house and met in the hallway right in front of me. Paulo, Mama cried. I just had a dream. I had been praying before I fell asleep, and I know the message was from God. A voice told me, go to the hospital, now. I will never forget the shock in my father's voice. Asanta, just moments ago, I had the same dream. I also heard those words, go to the hospital, now. He threw his arms around my mother. Hurry, he said. My parents rushed to the hospital. Dom was sitting upright. He had just come out of the coma. With a weak but clear voice, he said, I want some ice cream. The doctors were astonished. They discharged Dom soon afterward. He went on to live a full, healthy life. Dom later told me that while lying in the coma, he had experienced a vision that forever took away his fear of death. He had never told anyone exactly what it was he saw. He only said, I will never be afraid to die. God is good, and I will trust him forever. Many events have occurred in my life, since some involving illness and great disappointment and loss. But my parents' miraculous dreams on that June afternoon taught me that God directs our lives in ways we cannot begin to fathom. And like Dominic, I will trust him forever. As will I.